Hello everybody, my name is Frank Kini Martini from the Union Cross Nation channel. Brian is currently on vacation, last time I checked with him, he was having a bad case of Ligma. So, in the meantime, I'll be helping you guys out. But for today's episode, we're going to be going over the new copy medals that the global version of the game has just received. Now, Brian left me some notes for me to go over with you guys, just to make sure you guys are in the loop. So, just give me a second, I got, got the notes right here, just let me, uh put on my glasses okay so according to his notes and i quote the medals suck don't get them they're only good for op players but no in all seriousness um there's quite a few things i have to say about these medals uh, that are quite different compared to what I would usually say about most copy medals. Now, if you've been watching the channel for quite some time now, you would probably know that at this point, I'm a huge advocate for copy medals. Uh, if you're new to the channel, copy medals are essentially the best medals in the entire game, no matter what else comes out. Like seriously, I don't care what type of janky uh, metal comes out in the future. Copy medals are literally the best medals in the game. They are pretty much more or less uh, future proof, meaning that you can get a copy metal now and that copy metal will stay relevant for a very long time. Even just using the beginner copy metals that we currently have in the beginner's deal at the moment, the, the key art copy metals, which are tier five metals, those came out like what, two years ago or something like that? Uh, even to those even to this day those metals are still pretty relevant and very usable granted They are slowly becoming worse and worse as we start getting higher tiers of metals as time goes on But the fact that they can copy a metal is still Without a doubt one of the best abilities in the game and trying to obtain as many copy metals as possible is Going to be one of the best things you can possibly do as a player. However, when it comes to these new copy medals that we just received in Global, because of the fact that they are different from the traditional copy medals that we currently have in the game, that also means that my advice and the way you have to look at them is also going to be slightly different. Uh, and that's what we're going to be going over in today's video. But first of all, before I go on, let's just quickly go over the medals themselves. So, first up, we have Illustrated Foo. All three copy medals are the exact same. Thing. they are just of the different attributes we have illustrated foo who is magic we have illustrated rai who is power and we've illustrated cypher who is speed uh, they all do the same thing just different attributes so illustrated foo is a magic upright metal tier 8 cost 6 gauges is single target on its own not when it's copying uh, deals one hit on its own has a 7 star multiplier of 31.5 on its own, <laughs> at the keep reader net. And for one turn, it copies the special attack two slots before this metal. If none, it unleashes the special attack of this metal with one turn ability of, it increases the upright strength by three tiers. And the same thing can be said about Illustrated Rai and Cypher. Now, not too long ago, I actually already stated that I was expecting some new form of uh, backwards copy metals to be presented to the game just because of the fact of how slowly outdated the key art copy metals were starting to become uh, within the game. Now granted I wasn't exactly expecting copy metals like this to pop in the game but anyways like I was mentioning before normally whenever a copy metal comes in the game I would straight up be a hard advocate saying that you must get the copy metal at all costs. I do not care if a Supernova, Kinemarts 3, uh, EX++ Door to Darkness metal comes out into the game. Kapanos will always be the best medals in the game simply because of their versatility within the game. Now with that in mind, because of the fact that these copy medals are slightly different from traditional copy medals, that also means you have to treat them a little differently too in terms of whether or not uh, you should actually go dumping your jewels to try and get them. So we're going to quickly go over that. Okay, so the first thing I want to point out about these new copy medals is going to be about their versatility and how useful they're actually going to be in terms of setups and stuff. Now, I know the first gut reaction because they're just simply copy medals is going to be, oh, I need to get this. They're broken and stuff like that. And like you are here maybe thinking that you can put them here and here and stuff like that. Like the farthest back you can put them is slot three to essentially copy slot one. Uh, and then slot four to copy slot two and such. Okay, this is this is like these last four slots are essentially the only main places you can actually place these medals. However, chances are what many of you probably don't realize is that because 
of the fact that the first two slots on any Keyblade set setup is essentially reserved for mostly just uh, buffing yourself and debuffing the opponent, uh, it's actually not viable to put this copy metal or you know these copy metals in slots three or four because you'll essentially just be copying a buffer or debuffer metal um, and by nature main buffer and debuffer metals typically do not have very high multipliers which means that whatever you're copying with your copy metal in slots one or two is not going to be doing a lot of damage which is bad because of the fact that as soon as you reach slot three you're already want to start using some harder hitting metals so so even just taking it for example, just to show you what I mean, for uh, many players out there who do not have a Supernova Kyrie or Shion Metal just yet, chances are this is going to most likely more or less be what your beginning uh, two slots of your setup is going to look like. You're going to be using the Kyrie EX Plus or Shion EX Plus in slot one, uh, followed by a Kyrie or Shion EX Metal in slot two in order to help get the most of the buffs and debuffs. By slot two, this already provides almost all of the buffs uh, for your setup, and the only thing you're lacking are a little bit more of the debuffs. So chances are you would even probably have another debuffer metal in slot two, or three I mean, that can provide the rest of the debuffs and maybe even provide some of the extra uh some of the extra buffs to max things out so the dilemma that ends up arriving is that because of the fact that this is most likely going to be a majority of players setups and such um, it doesn't make sense for your copy metal to be in slots three or four because you're essentially copying a buffer metal that does not do very much damage at all in the first place okay so realistically what is going to end up happening is that slots six and five are pretty much going to be the only slots more or less that are going to be using these copy metals in solely because of the fact that you're going to be copying slots uh three and four okay where you actually will have some of the damage metals now how good those damage metals are is just going to be purely up to you and what type of metals you have at the moment but that is essentially what is going to happen because if you have the copy metal in slot six like where cypher is right now that's going to copy slot four if you put it in slot five it's going to copy slot three so right here i even have an example of a type of setup that does exactly what i just said okay so this is kind of like an average maybe like an intermediate player setup beginner setup one of the two it's essentially a non-veteran op player setup type of thing so you have the two kairis in the very beginning main buffer debuffer metals to get most of your buffs and debuffs and then i'm using a kingdom Hearts 2 yuffie uh prime metal copying it twice to get the rest of the debuffs and i'm more or less using the riku versus roxas metal here as damage although it does provide some extra Boston to bus too if I really need it okay but essentially because of the fact that I, I I basically had to spend four slots more or less just to get all of my buffs and debuffs within the game um, I'm essentially reserving my slots five and six over here for mainly just damage metals okay so i kind of used riku versus rocks over here just because i was i'm pretty confident that people are more likely to have riku versus roxas uh as a beginner and intermediate player compared to a you know high score challenge metal or some op uh non-mercy pool metal or something like that so i just put that there simply as like a damage replacement just for this example um, but yeah slots five and six are reserved just for damage and the dilemma that kind of arises from here is because of the fact you feel over here is not really the greatest of damage sure she does more damage than the main buffer metals for example um, she's not exactly the best damage metal that you would want especially not in a slot like slots five and six because remember, in a Keyblade setup, what is essentially supposed to be happening is that as you go through the Keyblade setup, your strength is supposed to be gradually increasing. So you start off with your weakest metals, which tend to be your main buffer metals. At the very beginning, apply all your buffs and debuffs because they're going to be doing very little damage in the first place. So you don't care about damage. And then from there, you start putting in your... Uh, 
slightly higher damage metals but still provide some buffs and debuffs which is essentially slots three and four um and then from here because your slots five and six are more than likely on most keyblades going to have the highest multipliers in your setup you want your strongest multiplier metals right there in those last slots uh, so because of the fact you're pretty much forced to put the, these new copy metals in just slots five or six ends up contradicting the whole point of natural setups in the first place, which is where you're grabbing this tier 8 copy metal to copy metals in slots 3 and 4, which are not going to be doing the greatest output of damage, and you're just copying that. Although with a higher tier, possibly, but you're still copying it. And, and if that's the case, you're honestly just going to be better off just replacing the copy metal with just your strongest damage metal in the first place that has a higher multiplier. And this right here is pretty much the kind of biggest contradiction about these new copy metals uh, is that um, is that because of the nature of setups right now and pretty much the entirety of the game since the game has been out, although these metals seem good at first, for the majority of players, uh, they're actually not going to be very useful. The only players that these metals are actually going to be useful for are going to be the OP or veteran players or top tier players, essentially. And the main reason for this is because of the fact that if you, for example, you already have a Supernova Kyrie or Shion, like shown right here, um, you can actually put the copy metals a slot higher up in slot four potentially to copy slot two the other reason and this one's the most important reason out of them to be honest is going to be because of the fact that an op or uh, top tier player or veteran player is already going to be able to achieve all their max buffs and debuffs either by slot one or if needed just by slot two they won't need to have slots three and four uh, to finish the rest of the buffs and debuffs they're not going to need that they're only going to use slots one and two that means copying slots three and four actually becomes viable because of the fact that a veteran player does not have to worry about those buffs and debuffs or having a low multiplier metal uh, in these slots anymore. Um, and just as an example of this, here's an example on the Finnir, for example, where I essentially am completing all my buffs and debuffs with Kyrie in slot one. The only thing I'm missing for this setup are going to be after slot one, any upright buffs or debuffs along with the rest of my power buffs and debuffs, which if I'm an OP player, top tier player, veteran player, whatever, I'm more than likely going to have medals like that. And the easiest example as of recently are going to be, uh, for example, the Supernova HD Terror that we just got recently that does everything that I just stated. So because of this, you can actually use a janky setup, kind of like what I have right here, where I have my Supernova Kyrie in slot one, getting most of my buffs and debuffs. And then I literally just copy the shit out of Terra over here. So these two metals copy Terra, and then I have my Rai over here copy Terra as well. And then you can even just have your friend metal just be a copy metal copying another friend's strong uh, damage metal or whatnot. I just put Aqua there just because why not? But like you could easily just put another uh, forwards copy metal in your pet slot if you wanted to. And this is literally exactly what I mean that the copy metals are pretty much only going to really benefit the OP or veteran players. Just just because of the fact that they are more likely to have uh, access to these easier setups compared to an intermediate or beginner player. Uh, so if your setup looks more along the lines of what this is right here in the starlight, then you really don't need these copy metals because you're not going to be getting, uh, finding much use of them anytime soon because realistically you're better off just using your strongest damage metal in the first place whereas if you're a veteran or op top tier player uh, then for you these metals might actually start seeing worth however on that note even for a veteran or op player these metals could essentially still be kind of useless <laughs> or just not as useful as you would like them to be and that is primarily because of the fact that if you're already a veteran or uh you know top tier player chances are you already have a significant amount of tier 7 or tier 8 metals like like you know, just metals in general okay and with this in mind remember that because of just the nature of setups these copper metals are pretty much only going to be used in slots 5 or 6 
possibly four depending on your setup. But for the most part, just slots five and six, and they're going to almost always copy a uh, hard damage metal. But because of the fact that tier nine metals just came out, what is most likely going to happen is that we're going to be receiving more and more tier 9 medals these next few months, maybe the next six months or so, along with maybe even more tier 8 medals too, that, that their multipliers might very easily be just stronger than what these uh, copy medals multipliers are going to be. Just going back to my setup that I have right here for the, the veteran setup, for example, when you think about it, okay, this is a tier 9 metal. This is going to have a higher multiplier compared to my Rai copy metal here, because this is only a tier 8 metal. Um, and realistically, in a setup like this, this fifth slot right here is going to have a higher multiplier compared to the third slot that I have right here as well. So in a setup sense, it doesn't really make sense to put my hardest hitting metal in a lower slot just to copy in a later slot when this later when this copy metal is essentially going to potentially do less damage than my hardest hitting metal it's kind of contradictory and over time as more stronger metals come out as more tier 9 metals come out which they definitely are because we already have tier 9 metals now um and that's not even taken into account maybe future like you know tier 10 tier 11 whatever whatever new mechanics come out the whole point of putting these copy metals into slots five and six kind of defeats the whole purpose <laughs> of what's already going to be coming out uh the trend that we're facing uh with these new metals coming out too their whole usage and everything it's just no matter how you look at it these metals are just super contradictory don't really find too much use for because of how restrictive they are in their use as well just being stuck on slots five and six they're going to more or less already end up doing less damage than any new metals that come out overall despite being a copy metal there's just not too much going for them because of the fact they're not you know more along the lines of a traditional copy metal to be honest i would have much rather preferred that they just made a tier 8 version of the key art copy metals just stick with the traditional copy metals uh try not to do anything different just just stick with traditional copy metals and just and just reprint them with a higher tier i honestly would have much preferred that uh that would have been way more useful but because of the fact that they decided to do it in this way it's actually it's actually not as good and kind of I don't want to say pointless exactly, but it just kind of defeats the purpose of the copy metals in the first place. So that was just the metals themselves in that explanation. Now, let's go into the actual banner, which is when looking at the imitation metal deal. I have so many mixed feelings about this deal. The first thing just being because of the fact that every single time that you pull from this banner, you are guaranteed a copy of, a, of any of the existing copy metals, including the new... Uh, one of the three new copy metals as well. On paper, that sounds fantastic, okay? Uh, especially for all those, you know, tier eight uh, copy metals that we that we have in the game, but like never saw a reprint, are already hard enough as it is to try and get a copy within, within a normal pull in the first place. Um, pretty much if you were not around or didn't have enough jewels when they first came out in their original banners, chances are, you're more than likely not going to be able to get any of those copy medals anymore, um, or at least not anytime soon without playing for a long period of time. Um, and to me, I think that's just an absolute terrible way for Square Enix to do this in, in a game like this. Uh, they should, like, for medals like that, those are, that's like easy money for them to just reprint them. <laughs> um, especially highly sought after medals like copy medals. But that's the, besides the point. But on paper, it sounds great that you can guarantee a copy metal every single pull but when you actually take a look at the pull rates uh, for the deal you're more than likely on most of your pulls going to have a very high chance of getting one of the uh the beginner's deal key art copy metals ah <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but to me, that's kind of, that's kind of, I don't know if shady is the right word, but it's a very, it's a very low blow. Like typically to me, when I see an, uh, a copy metal deal, I'm expecting like increased rates um, or just significantly better chances on getting some of the higher tier uh, or less 
obtainable copy medals in general. Like that's supposed to be the chance to get those other copy medals. Uh, but in this banner, they kind of just said no. You're essentially paying for the same price as a beginner's deal over here. Uh, just slightly better because of the fact you can actually get a tier uh, 7, 7 star medal alongside with it. Okay, that's, that's basically what they're telling you here. So to me that feels kind of bad. Um, and the only actual worth from this banner is going to be the 5 mercy deal that they have. Uh, they should have just separated each of the copy medals in a separate banner. I do not like the fact of like if I want a specific copy medal for example even though despite everything I said earlier in the video about how they're not really as good unless you're already a top tier player. I do not like the idea that I essentially have to gamble to get the copy medal that I want. Uh, although it's Mercy, which is nice, I would have much preferred they just split it up into three separate banners for each of the copy medals so that way I can just get the one that I want. Okay, because I, I am not looking to potentially get the copy medal that I want. Um, because if I end up getting the copy medal that I did not want, what I'm essentially going to be forced to do is more than likely just use it in the pet slot, which might defeat the purpose, you know, the whole, everything I said earlier, basically. So with that in mind, in terms of whether or not you should actually pull from the banner, actually try and go for any of these copy medals, what I would have to say is that A, if you're a free to play player, I would pretty much just say just skip this banner, okay, just skip the copy medals. Realistically, as much as it hurts to say, uh, if you're just planning to stay as, multi as free to play for the course of this game and such, um, you're going to almost always be pretty much behind in terms of the meta. Uh, in which case, like, you're probably not going to have some of the OP medals, such as, like, any of the uh, Supernova medals that we've been getting lately and such. You're probably not going to have, like, you know, a Kyrie or Shion Supernova medal to get a lot of those easy setups to even warrant to be able to use one of these, for example. And by the time you do get a Supernova Kyrie or Shion, chances are another one might be uh, just around the corner and just put you right back uh, behind the meta anyways in the first place. And so more or less, you might just end up in the scenario of the, uh, the whole Starlight beginner setup that I showed earlier. Now, that advice is also going to apply for any beginning players that are out there as well. The only thing extra that I would say on top of that for beginner players is that because of the fact you're already kind of behind in terms of the meta, most likely, I'm willing to bet it's going to take you quite a long time before you even get anywhere close to meta, uh, like in terms of like top rankings and stuff in the first place. So in that regards, I don't really feel like it's worth for you chasing for these medals either because like I said before, these medals are pretty much only going to be good for top tier players for right now uh, because realistically what is going to happen by the time you even have a decent meta setup or become a top tier player we're already going to have a decent amount of tier 9 medals heck we might even have tier 10 medals for all we know which is going to kind of render these copy medals kind of pointless so even if you're trying to go in with the mindset of investing now so that way it can pay off later in the future I'm sorry to say that it's actually probably going to be the opposite, where it's actually not going to pay off as much or or, or at all, um, or very much at all, like, you know, in the future. Last but not least, for veteran or top tier players, I'm kind of grouping you in the same uh, boat because you're more or less most likely going to have similar setups. Uh, the top tier players are probably just going to have, you know, more extra attack or, you know, or just more consistent traits, basically. But overall, your setup should be more or less the same. For you guys, I'm going to just pretty much say that it's going to be completely up to you. If you're going to pull from these banners, it's going to be for the five pull Mercy. You're better off just kind of assuming that any of the pulls before the, the Mercy pull are going to end up receiving mostly just key art copy medals. On top of the fact that if you are going to go for the Mercy, I would only go for a one Mercy pull and that's it. I wouldn't consider doing more than one Mercy uh, if you decide to do so, just because of everything I mentioned previously in the video. On top of the fact that you, it's really not worth, in my opinion, trying to gamble, trying to get the copy medals that you want, or trying to get all three copy medals for that matter. Brian made sure to let me know to remind you guys to leave your thoughts and your opinions in the comment section down below. He'll take a look at them later. But other than that, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe, and hit that bell button. It's the best way to know when I upload more, or my bad. It's the best way to know when Brian uploads more videos such as this one. <laughs> my name is Frank, and I will see you guys in the next video. So yeah, that's the end of the video.
I think you should, uh, you should totally smash that subscribe button right there, as well as check out any one of those future, these past videos on the side too. Just saying.